Hi everyone, this is U.S. Immigration Lawyer Michael Ashuri, and in today's video I want to talk about the K-1 visa form. Specifically, there are five forms that are needed throughout the process of applying for a K-1 visa, the fiancé visa. And in this video, I'm going to talk about all five of those forms that are required. So with that said, let's get started. That's a quick overview. Um, I want to explain what the K-1 visa is. The K-1 visa is also called the fiancé visa, and it's a visa that allows a U.S. citizen to bring their fiancé to the United States. Once the fiancé is in the United States, the couple can get married, and once they're married, the fiancé can apply for their green card in the United States without leaving. Now, that's uh, the fiancé visa explained um, the basics of it. Now, um, throughout the process, as I mentioned, there's a number of forms that are required to apply. Um, the question is, what are those forms? And that's what we're going to answer right now. The first form is the form I-129F. This is called the Petition for Alien Fiancé. That's the name of the form. That's the first form that needs to get filed by the U.S. citizen, and it's filed with USCIS. Um, when the U.S. citizen is submitting this form, they also include a lot of documents demonstrating that all the uh, fiancé visa requirements are satisfied. So for example, the, they will include evidence um, that the, the two have seen each other in person within the last two years. Um, the U.S. citizen will include a copy of their passport showing that they're a U.S. citizen. Uh, this, with this form is where a lot of documents are sent. Um, again, this is the form I-129F. Um, another form that you should know about is the DS-160. The DS-160 is the Online Non-Immigrant Visa Application. This form is filed by the foreign fiancé, um, and it's the actual application to apply for the visa. When you file this form, um, what, you'll end up scheduling a visa interview, and at the interview they'll ask you various questions, but this is a required form to start that whole process. Again, it's called the DS-160. Another form that you should know about is the Form I-675. This is the application for employment authorization. So once the fiancé enters the United States, they're eligible to apply for employment authorization. And again, once they apply for their, once the couple gets married, um, the fian and the fiancé files their application to adjust status, which we'll talk about in a minute. The fiancé is also eligible to apply for employment authorization again. So um, employment authorization is very important. It's your, it's the, you know, it's the authorization to work in the United States, which is very important for many people. And in order to apply for the employment authorization, you need to file the form I six seven, uh, sorry, the I seven six five. So that's another important uh, form that comes up throughout this process. Now another form I just kind of touched upon it. It's the form. I-485. This is another very important uh, part of the process of getting, um, you know, a green card through a fiancé visa. And the form I-485 is the application to register permanent residence or adjust status. Um, so as a quick overview, the way the fiancé visa works, as I mentioned this earlier in this video, is that once the fiancé comes to the United States using their fiancé visa, the couple should get married within 90 days of the fiancé's entry to the United States. Once the couple is now married, the fiancé can now apply for um, an adjustment of status. An adjustment of status is the process of going from non-immigrant status to permanent resident status. Permanent resident status basically being a green card holder. And the way to do this is by filing the Form I-485. The application to register permanent residence stat to register permanent residence or adjust status. Um, so that's another important uh, form that needs to be filed. Now uh, the fifth form is called the form G28. Now this form is only required if you're working with an attorney. If you're working with an attorney, the form G28 is the form that the attorney signs and you sign and it allows the attorney to act on your behalf. So the attorney can communicate directly with USCIS um, on your behalf. USCIS, uh, depending on how you fill out the form, will send the attorney various uh, notices to the attorney's office. Um, and in order to 
allow for the, the attorney to uh, basically do these things and, and communicate with USCIS on your behalf and for the attorney to receive notices and to represent you, um, both you and the attorney need to sign the form G-28. The G-28 is also called the Notice of Entry of Appearance as Attorney or Accredited, Rep Accredited Representative. Um, so yeah, that's a necessary form if you're working with an immigration lawyer. And those are the five forms that you need to know about when you're applying for a K-1 visa, also called a fiancé visa. Um, if you guys, I, first of all, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope you guys have a much better sense of the forms that are necessary when applying for a fiancé visa. If you did find it helpful, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to our channel. When you guys like, it really helps us. And when you subscribe, you get access to all of our videos and you get them as we post them. We po we're constantly posting U.S. immigration videos and the best way to stay in the loop is to subscribe. So uh, yeah, please go ahead and do that. If you have any questions at all, I've put my contact details in the description below. Um, I've also included a special link where you can schedule a free consultation with my office. Um, feel free to schedule a consultation. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to hear from you. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.